Good morning. Welcome to Campus Ministries Morning Chapel here at Augsburg University. We are blessed by your presence, whether it is in person or joining us virtually online. It is really, really good to be together. Dietrich Bonhoeffer in Life Together talks about the first service we owe to others and the fellowship of believing consists in listening to them. And this morning we are invited and we get to listen to our very own president, Paul Primenal. John Donahue's Easter blessing. This morning, let us look again to the lives we have been so generously given and let us fall away the useless baggage that we carry our pains, our habits, our old ways of seeing and feeling and let us have the courage to begin again. Let us pray, blessed be the mothering God and father of our Lord, Jesus Christ. By their great mercy has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Fill this space and time with the presence of your spirit, the source of life, the word of life, and the breath of life, love, and hope. And together we say, Amen. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 21st chapter. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Creator and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Biblical commentators suggest that the 21st chapter of John's Gospel, from which we have just read, was added to the original narrative. And as always the case in such findings, the question is why? What was going on that those who edited the gospel felt it needed to be added to complete the story? What was going on in the community of those for whom John's gospel account was meaningful that it required these additional 25 verses? For some of us, these are intriguing questions of biblical and theological scholarship. For others of us, not so much so. I might suggest though that for all of us, situated here some 1900 years after the gospel was first circulated, these additional verses are most relevant. In fact, I might be so bold as to say that chapter 21 is meant especially for you and me here at Augsburg in this chapel during this Easter season near the end of our academic year in the midst of a global pandemic. Let's imagine ourselves in the place of the disciples in these days after, after the intense years of ministry across the countryside, after the triumphal entry into Jerusalem, after the Passover, 
after poignant and emotional final meals together, after betrayal and denials, after the cross, after an empty tomb. Now what do we do? Well, I guess you do what you know how to do. Simon Peter says it plainly. I'm going fishing. I'm going back to the life I knew before I was called away. I want what's normal. I'm going back to the familiar and mundane as if these years with Jesus were simply a dream, ultimately a nightmare. I can go back and earn a living and get on with things and the others join in. But there are no fish to find. The familiar and mundane is empty and disappointing. And then there he is on the lakeshore, a vague figure who knows of their disappointment and emptiness. You have no fish, have you? He asks. No, they answer. Cast your nets again and you will find some. And so their nets are filled beyond measure. 153 fish, we're told a few verses later. And then they recognize him as Jesus, their Lord. And as they rush to greet him, filled once again with the joy and abundance they have known in their lives together, Jesus says simply, come and have breakfast. And there they are, gathered around the campfire, breaking bread together, eating the fish he helped them to catch. There they are, afraid to ask how this was possible, afraid to break the spell of the moment. And yet they knew they knew it was the Lord. He is risen. He is risen indeed. I would guess that all of us have moments when we have the sense of living in the days after. My spouse Abigail has worked over the years in the arts community and she talks about how the preparation for an art exhibit or performance or production leads you through a series of emotions that can leave you pretty dejected when the production is over. Post-production blues, she calls them. Others of us might feel that way about the end of our college years here at Augsburg. What do I do now? Others among us may be retiring, wondering what will offer meaning and direction in the days ahead. Perhaps your examples are less extreme, though still unsettling. A relationship ends, a job search falls apart, a family splits. What do we do in the days after? And all of us are left with our questions about what we will do after this pandemic is behind us. Perhaps like the disciples, it's back to what is familiar, to what we've always done. Or maybe it's coping with the disappointment and anxiety with a sense of fatalism. This is the best I can do, the best I can hope for. And perhaps we too find our nets empty. The world defines success in ways we simply can't live up to. And then he is there standing on the lake shore, just as when he first called us, follow me, sending words of encouragement our way, instructing us to cast our nets again. And all of a sudden we recognize our Lord and he invites us to come to the table, to break bread together, to lay at the altar our burdens and joys, our disappointments, as well as the bounty and abundance of our nets overflowing. He is risen, he is risen indeed. Here is the powerful Easter message in these days after, the message we have from John's gospel that is so relevant to our 21st century lives of faith. Yes, you must go back to your lives in the world, but now your lives in the world have been transformed by the power of the resurrection. Now the calls you have received, your vocations have a different meaning and trajectory. In your daily lives, God is alive and acting so that you might know and make real God's will for the world. What the world counts as success has been set aside for all time. Now your lives serve the risen Lord. And no, you have not been left alone. Jesus is here with you in your daily lives. He knows we may be disappointed and dejected and anxious and afraid. But remember, he says, how I called you from the lakeshore. Remember how you recognized me in the breaking of the bread. Remember how I invited you into community. Know that I am with you, offering my comfort and encouragement and guidance and love, even when you feel lost and alone. And yes, all has changed. So follow me again 
and still again. We can't deny all that happened, healing and compassion, love for our neighbors, triumphal entries, frightening times of betrayal and denial, feet washed, bread broken, government and religious pageants aimed at dousing God's love, horrific and painful death, three days and a stone rolled away, resurrection. Reports of being together again, despite the doubters. That now is done. God loves you. You have been redeemed. And that is not the end. I need you now to follow again and still again, to be my living body on earth, to share the good news. Come and have breakfast with me, for our work together has just begun. One of the central claims of an Augsburg education grounded in helping our students, each of us, to find our vocational meaning, to find our call, is how the various experiences of our lives, growing up in a particular family, a particular place, belonging to a particular faith community or not, having a certain group of friends, coming to this particular college, studying a certain set of themes or majors, choosing a career path, all these experiences are part of the narrative that has history, that has an arc, that has influenced and shaped all of the relationships and institutions and decisions that are part of your story. What I believe it, we do at Augsburg is not to tell you what your vocation should be, though we all need some advice sometimes, but it is to help you make sense of that story, to find coherence in the narrative, to see the significance of how the various threads of your story weave a life for you in the world, to consider how you will live in the days after, because there will be many days after. In this understanding of vocation, then the Easter message about the days after become especially important because these are the days when we need to take responsibility for how our story continues to unfold, even when we are away from those advisors and teachers and friends who perhaps inspired us or motivated us or supported us down this path. As John's gospel concludes, God does not leave us alone in our journeys in the meantime. Jesus is still inviting us to the table, to breakfast. Wendell Berry, in his whimsical poem, Manifesto, the Mad Farmer Liberation Front, offers us this insightful take on this message for life in the days after, and I quote just a couple of stanzas from his poem. So friends, every day do something that won't com compute. Love the Lord, love the world, work for nothing, take all that you have and be poor, love someone who does not deserve it, denounce the government, embrace the flag, hope to live in that free republic for which it stands, give your approval to all you cannot understand, Praise ignorance for what man has not encountered, he has not destroyed. Go with your love to the fields, lie down in the shade, rest your head in her lap, swear allegiance to what is highest in your thoughts. As soon as the generals and the politicos can predict the motions of your mind, lose it. Leave it as a sign to mark the false trail, the way you didn't go. Be like the fox who makes more tracks necessary. Some in the wrong direction, practice resurrection. What to do now? Come and have breakfast. Practice resurrection. Thanks be to God. Amen. Down to the lake shore, seeking neither the wise nor the wealthy, but only asking for me to follow. Sweet Lord, you have looked into my eyes, kindly. 
gently smiling, you called out my name. On the sand, I have abandoned my small boat. Now with you, I will seek other seas. other waters, you the longing of souls that are yearning, a loving friend you have come to call me, sweet Lord, you have looked into my eyes, kindly smiling, you called out my name. And I have abandoned my small boat. Now with you, I will seek other seas. Thank you, President Pribunov, for that bold proclamation and invitation. Thank you, Tom, for leading us in music worship. Now let's receive this blessing. Our nets are full. We've been invited to breakfast, breakfast with Jesus. May the loving power of God, which raised Jesus to new life, strengthen you in hope, enrich you with his love, and fill you with joy in the faith. Amen. Now following the way of Jesus, go practice resurrection. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.